on the low end by year end, that's the end of the calendar year, this saw probably 70,000 cases. And the reason is, is because we're understanding more if a person gets it, how many people are going to get infected. And anything less than a factor of one means that it'll burn out and it'll go away. But by pretty much all the mathematical modeling, the numbers are greater than one, two, three cases for every single infected case. And that may not sound like much from one to two to three, but that's the difference between 70,000 cases and 250,000 cases by year end. That's how dramatically it can expand in that region. There hasn't been any airborne transmission. That's the thing that everybody's concerned about. It's still direct contact with secretions and fluids, that kind of thing. So that hasn't changed. But the fact that a person can have a virus at the beginning of their illness, and let's say they survive it, the virus can be different at the end of their illness. That's how rapidly the, the mutation of virus can uh, occur. There's still reason to believe that if a person gets over it, that they're immune to it and to all the strains. So I don't think people need to necessarily think that there's wild, crazy mutations that are going on that's going to dramatically change the mode of transmission, for example. Possibilities are supplies and equipment because they are very low on protective equipment. That's why we see so many people getting infected, healthcare workers, for example. Um, the, there's not enough beds. And as grim as that sounds, go into these Ebola containment uh, hospitals, if you will, and people will be laying on the floor. They'll be dying on the floor and uh, not e to even have beds. So I, I think some of it is, and I'll say is simple, it's really not simple, getting uh, supplies there. And that leads to number two, which is military. One of the things that is being brought up both, again, in the EU and in the United States is deployment of military troops to that area because there's a breakdown of public health, public safety, uh, military, government, et cetera. And one of the things that our military services do very well is in austere conditions, they manage well with mobile hospitals, uh, people that are accustomed to hardships in terms of dealing with difficult situations. And they don't have the kinds of troops and training that we have. So uh, that will be the subject of considerable discussion both here and in Europe.